Written collaboratively by Athol Fugard, John Connie, and Winston Shona, the play Siswi Banzi is dead delves into the life of Siswi Banzi, who, amidst desperate circumstances, is compelled to forsake his own identity and adopt the persona of a deceased man. The play's inception came during Fugard's time as a law clerk at the Native Commissioner's Court in Johannesburg, where he witnessed the impact of South African pass laws. These laws mandated that every black man carry a passbook, restricting his employment and travel within the country, enforcing segregation. The story begins in photographer Stiles's studio located in New Brighton, Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Stiles, deeply committed to preserving the images of his people, shares humorous anecdotes about his experiences at the Ford Motor Company while reading a news article about an automobile plant. In the midst of his storytelling, Siswi Banzi arrives at the studio, seeking to have his picture taken. However, when Stiles asks for his name, Siswi hesitates and provides a false identity, Robert Zwilinzema. Siswi explains that he intends to send the photo to his wife. As Stiles captures the picture, the actors momentarily freeze, giving the audience a glimpse of the final image. During this stillness, Siswi narrates the contents of the letter he plans to send to his wife, revealing that he has taken on the identity of Robert Zwilinzema after facing hardships and the threat of being forced to leave town. He seeks assistance from his friend Zola, who introduces him to Buntu, hoping he can help Siswi find employment. The subsequent scene portrays Siswi dictating his letter to Buntu, where he shows him his passbook, a symbol of the oppressive laws that govern their lives. The play delves into the complexities of identity, survival, and the struggle against an unjust system, shedding light on the plight of black men during that time in South Africa. In the play, Siswi Banzi is dead, Buntu, the only literate character, discovers that Siswi was supposed to return home three days ago, indicating that finding work is unlikely. Buntu suggests the dangerous option of working in the King Williamstown mines, but Siswi hesitates due to the lack of alternative opportunities there. Fearing for his family's well-being, Siswi feels disheartened by the situation. In an attempt to lift Siswi's spirits, Bunta takes him to a local bar, called Sky's Place. During Siswi's letter dictation, he describes the respectful treatment he received at the bar. As they leave the bar, they encounter a dead man in an alley. Siswi urges Buntu to report the death to the police, but Buntu decides to search the man's belongings instead. They find the man's passbook which reveals his name as Robert Zwilinzema and his worker's stamp allowing him to remain in the city. Bunta convinces Siswi to adopt Robert's identity by swapping their passbook photos, enabling him to obtain a lodger's permit. The play concludes with Siswi returning to the photography studio for another picture, this time under his new identity. Throughout the play, the audience witnesses the apartheid system in South Africa, a system of institutionalized racism that led to segregation and economic hardship for black South Africans. The play sheds light on the enduring effects of this oppressive regime that lasted until the early 1990s. Identity serves as a prominent and recurring theme throughout the play, Siswi Banzi is dead. It manifests in various scenes, starting with Styles who undergoes a transformation from a factory worker to a photographer. He expresses a deep interest in preserving the identity of his people through his photographs. The focus then shifts to Siswi, who adopts the identity of another man as a means of survival and to provide for his family. In doing so, he must abandon his former self, effectively sacrificing his original identity to secure fundamental human rights. The play delves into the complexities and struggles individuals face in their pursuit of a better life. The world premiere of Siswi Banzi is Dead was directed by Fugard in Cape Town, with John Connie and Winston Shona, his collaborators, taking on the leading roles. Connie portrayed Styles and Bantu, while Shona played Robert and Siswi. Their remarkable performances earned them a Tony Award, and Fugard was nominated for a Tony for Best Direction of a Play. The actors reunited in 2007 to stage the play at the Royal National Theatre, further highlighting the enduring impact and significance of this thought-provoking exploration of identity and social challenges. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.